Hey, welcome to this year in review video and a Merry Christmas to you. We hope you had a great time celebrating together and thanks for joining us uh, for this short, hopefully, video. <laughs> we uh, can talk long. It might we not can be short. talk long. <laughs> so we'll try and keep it short for you, but this is our uh, year in review video uh, for Boxing Day of 2021 and we're just going to be talking about what God's done this past year, but also we're just going to take what he's done and then use that to help us to look forward into the year ahead as well. Uh, so stay with us and uh, get yourself a coffee yeah. and just make yourself comfortable as we share this time together this morning. Yeah, so we looked back a lot of what actually happened at Numa really this year when we did our Heart for the House. Like that was a great Sunday just celebrating what God has done, what we see God is going to do, all those kinds of things and asking you guys to sow into that. And um, so it, this part is probably shorter than it was last year because I remember we really went into a lot of detail last year, but we know that God has moved. We know that he is active. We've seen God's hand on our community here at Numa Church this year. And it's been really great to see, despite being locked down for actually over half the year and not able to physically meet, Like I just feel like in his faithfulness and through our obedience we've just seen god move in some really powerful ways and you know we've seen that in prayer we've seen that through mm -hmm. healings we've seen that through transformation of people's lives and i asked a question a few weeks ago when i was preaching about you know who's seen god move in their life who's seen themselves grow in their faith and i think everybody in the room put their hands up and that's actually really a big part of what nick and i want not just to see new people coming to jesus yeah. but seeing those who have been walking with Jesus for years find new life in him, find new faith mm. in him and to grow in their relationship with him. And you know, for Nick and I, we've just been incredibly encouraged to see this vision that was sown in our hearts back in the UK really start to come to fruition. Yeah. Like we, we, don't actually believe it's fully there yet but nope. we're fully um but we're just really encouraged and excited to see what god has done and how he's actually moved in the vision that he's mm. given us and one thing that nick and i are hugely grateful for hugely grateful for is mm. the people that he's put around us so that's you guys yeah. and if you're watching and not part of numa church or not part of the team like it's such an amazing group of people to be part of. So can I encourage you to yeah. do that? Because <laughs> like we get so much life for hang from hanging out with our, our people, our yeah. team. Um, they bring so much, you bring so much life to us. And we're so grateful for each and every one of you that has sown and been part of Numa Church this year. Yeah, and actually that just has reminded me of something we don't even have in our notes. So I'm yeah. just going to throw this in. Um, <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> but one of the highlights for me of this year mm. was actually at the very end of October um, when Rich Drinov completely mm. surprised us and got us up on stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, just showed us honour mm. as the pastors of the church. And it, the reason that was significant to me was not actually being shown honour, but was just that sign of together as family, yeah. together as church, yeah. being together and just that sign of solidarity and yeah. unity that we are together in this and yeah. we're going forwards and I, yeah, I just love One vision, love one that. heart, right? One yeah. vision, one heart and yeah, I, I, I absolutely love that. So I'm just going to quickly <laughs> throw you this question. Oh, that, was, no. <laughs> that, was a, that was a highlight for me. Okay. What was a highlight for you from this year? Actually, no, I do know what it is. Like, I have such a heart for prayer and God's really been increasing that this year. And we've been doing that through the prayer walks and things mm. as a church and as a community. And uh, what started as Zoom prayer meetings right. on Mondays and Fridays, we're now meeting in person on a Monday. And it's But great. actually, yeah. And But a highlight for me is actually when we were invited into the space to do that as churches together in mm. South Siren White Rock. Yeah. That was just something that God had been really speaking into my heart about, but I didn't feel like I was in a position to spearhead that. And then we got approached about this prayer walk idea for the whole community. And I just loved yeah. the sense of churches coming together. And I still have, we still have a real heart for we that. Do. So I love what that sparked in me. And I love what that hopefully has begun yeah. in this region for God to move, not just in Numa Church, but actually in the churches together. Like that's such a big part of... Nick and my's heart actually is, yeah. yes, we're leading Numa Church, but actually we would just want to be part of the church, the kingdom movement mm. in this region. Amen. And yeah. that 
I think that just really excited me about what God can do in this region when we come together yeah. as people of God to further his kingdom together. Yeah, and, and we absolutely love what God has been mm -hmm. doing here and what he's been doing through NUMA. And as Sarah said, we... We believe there's so much more that God's wanting to do, yeah. but at the same time, we do not want to diminish what he has been doing. And yeah. we we just have been blown away by what God has been doing this year, and particularly yeah. in the last quarter of this year, just one of the ways that that has been expressed, mm -hmm. and it's certainly not the only way, but one of the ways is is actually in the giving. And yeah. Sarah mentioned the Heart for the House Sunday that we had, um, but we want to also recognize that uh, we've had a lot of support from <laughs> the UK where we came from. And yeah. I think he worked out um, a little earlier yeah, in the year. It was something like $120,000 yeah, like yeah. that has been given from our Huge. UK support base. And mm. people there who are believing in the call of God yeah. to, to move here in this region. And, yeah. and if there's anyone in the UK that's watching this, then <laughs> yeah. we just want to say thank you. Yeah. Um, genuinely, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for believing in the call of God. Thank you for believing in what mm. God's doing. Thank you for supporting us and standing behind yeah. us in that. Yeah. Um, but we have been encouraged personally yeah. as, as God has brought in resources from all sorts of different places, yeah. not just from the UK. The Heart yeah. for the House offering this year has brought in so far. There is There has been additional stuff coming yeah. recently, so we still don't have a final figure. No. <laughs> but we know that it is over $35,000 that has been given, Insane. which is just incredible. And we just, yeah. again, want to say a huge thank you to anyone that's been a part yeah. of that. And, and can I actually just add to that? Mm. Like, we have had it from all sorts of places, yeah. but actually the majority of that has been from within our own community. Yeah. Like the majority figure is from within you, the people yeah. of Numa Church. And, yeah. you know, we're not the biggest church and God mm. has used you powerfully. And yeah. it's given us a fresh lift into 2022 that actually we were just, it's beyond what we thought was going to happen. So thank you. Yeah. And, and so... Um, we want to say thank you to everyone that's given mm. individually. We yep. also want to say thank you to those churches mm -hmm. um, that have given because we've seen Sunrise Church yep. here in Surrey and yep. Hope Community Church here in Surrey, The Way Church in Vancouver, yep. Oceans Church in Destin, Florida, yep. uh, have all given to us. And, and we're just amazed by the way yep. that God has resourced. And, and part of us receiving mm -hmm. is that we also want to give of that as well. Yeah. So do you want to talk a bit about yeah, that? Yeah, so we have our missions partners. So we are giving $1,000 to each of our mission partners um, mm. this month before the end of the year. Um, and our first one is City Dream Center, which many of you will know and have yeah. partnered with us as we've practically served them. And it's been such a privilege, even just this past couple of weeks, we were able to help them pack over 2,800 yeah. 2, gift boxes for kids in their schools that are in the a slightly underprivileged under is that the word underprivileged yeah uh, yeah mm. yeah <laughs> areas of surrey and it's just been such an amazing way to do that and it's just in some ways it's such an easy way to serve god in this region because city dreams data center basically do 98 percent of the work and then we come in for the last two percent and take all the glory um <laughs> as we pack the boxes right so but actually they do a fantastic job of organizing it like getting mm -hmm. everything together and it was such a fun thing to do as a team so i think everyone there worked hard but it was so worthwhile yeah. and there'll be so many more opportunities as we go into 2022 to continue working with the city dream center our actual aim as a church is to um, actually eventually when we're big enough and strong enough is actually to sponsor a school ourselves so that we yeah. can build a relationship in that way we can serve a school in that way and whether that's us on our own as Numa Church or partnered with another church mm. we would love to reach the point where we could actually sponsor a school ourselves and love on them that way as well yeah, we'd absolutely love to do that and then that's kind of a, a local yeah. focus for us yeah. we've got a, a national focus uh, with our missions giving which mm. is mercy canada we're also going to be giving yep. money to them we've been using some of their material yes. just this uh, <laughs> semester as well so in one of our groups we've been doing keys to freedom which Great is some course. of their study material yep. that's been uh, just an amazing privilege for me mm. to lead and sarah stepped in yep. when i was away one week and i <laughs> enjoyed that as well a great group um, yep. and there was just this um a bit of testimony that came in really yep. as to the impact of that group um so one of uh, those on the 
group on the course um, with me said it was a power group study <laughs> with very valuable revelations yeah. and then said this, God worked powerfully in my heart and soul. I learned tools to use when the attacks come and I learned it's okay to struggle mm. and it's okay to need to heal. More importantly, I learned that healing with the Lord at the center is not only possible, but it is inevitable. Amazing. And I love what that. A, yeah, what great. That when Jesus grace. is at the center, yeah. your healing isn't just possible, but inevitable. inevitable. Such a beautiful way of putting it. Yeah, and I mean, that's such an important ministry for us because it ties in so much with what we have a heart for as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like we have this heart to see people set free. And yeah. that's what Mercy Canada spends its yeah. time doing. And we get, love the fact that we can use their resources, but then also sew into them Absolutely. as a like, ministry. Yeah. Our final one that we um, partner with is Global Disciples. And again, $1,000 will be going to them. And um, we know Andre, who works for them really well. And uh, we just get to hear the stories. And there's just so many great, things happening in that community it's a hard time like everything has been impacted by this stupid covid and we don't want to mention it too much because everyone <laughs> talks about it but they're still doing some great work and they're seeing jesus move powerfully and they're still training up these local pastors to go out and plant churches and increase the kingdom of god so it's just great mm -hmm. to be able to as a church plant and we're going to be under that category i think a lot longer than maybe we intended originally or but expected, because yeah. of circumstances but yeah. Um, as a church plant, we can be sowing into other church plants. And this is how we can begin doing that. And obviously, as we grow and as we move forward, we'd love to be actually physically planting again. But yeah. for now, God has given us this way to actually sow directly into church planting. And that's through Global Disciples. So yeah. we're just really privileged and honored yeah. to be partnering with that work. And obviously, we mm. support other ministries practically like Call a Boo and things like that. And again, as we grow, we hope to be able to put financial money behind some of the things that we practically support or prayerfully support um mm -hmm. because it's important to us to keep growing our missional giving because it's part of us being part of something wider than just and we ourselves. want to continue being a generous church yeah, and 100%. modeling generosity and yeah. um just showing our, yeah. our community what it means to actually be generous yeah 100%. um now, one of the things that we've been thinking about is that in the midst of everything that is going on, in the midst of all the challenges mm. that we're facing, it can be easy without opportunities like this, without occasions like this. It yeah. can be easy to actually forget <laughs> what God has done and how yeah. far we've come this year. Yeah. Um, and, and our desire is that we want all of us to continue growing in mm. our faith yeah. and to continue going deeper in our relationship with Jesus. 100%. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to talk about some tools um, yeah. that we've talked about before. We talked yeah. about this last year, but we want to just recap them, I guess, yeah. um, in order to help us all to maintain our focus and to help encourage us and build our faith. Yeah, because we talked a bit when we were talking about this kind of session that we were going to be doing about how we can transition well across the years. Now, in some ways, we could do this any time. Yeah, but we, I think yeah. when we change years, it's just kind of a nice marker to really just reset and refocus and just gives like a time frame for things mm. um, when we're wanting to grow in our faith or when we're wanting to press into certain things. And yeah. I think it's helpful. Um, and actually some things may carry over. So don't feel bad <laughs> if something hasn't been achieved in 2021. Don't feel bad about it carrying into mm. 2022. God's still got work that he wants to do in your life. And it yeah. might just be that he wants to push you further in that. So mm -hmm. Don't be discouraged if something hasn't come to pass or you feel like you haven't got as far with something as maybe you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'll share something about that later as well. But um, so last year, and this is also what we're going to encourage you this year, is to... Yep pray for God to give you a word. And when I mean a word, I literally mean a word, not like, you know, sometimes you talk about okay, God yeah. giving us a word, which is like a bigger thing. But what I mean is like, so last year I had the word beyond and I, you know, just prayed into that, asked God to reveal to me what that kind of meant. And it was just that sense of going beyond mm. what I could do in my human self and God doing beyond like very much that Ephesians passage about like him doing immeasurably more. more than we can ask or imagine, but also that sense of, um, uh, yes, the name's just gone right out. Gideon, um, <laughs> where Gideon took something small, but did something amazing. And, yeah. but equally we've seen God do beyond, I mean, even the heart for the house offering, Absolutely. right. That's just the epitome of that. I mean, it's kind of built up through the year, but, um, yeah, just very much um, God doing 
beyond yeah. what we can ask or imagine. And so I'm looking forward to sitting down with Jesus over these next couple of weeks and just praying into my word for next year and just seeing what that means. And hopefully you did that last year and you can share testimony mm-hmm. um, and kind of glorify God for what he has done in your life this year through that Uh, And for those who perhaps didn't do that last year because they've joined us during this year or they're completely new to us, how do you find that word? What does it look like? Uh, What does it look like? What do I do practically? (laughs) To to get that word. I mean, for me, it's however you connect with God best. So for me, silence isn't it. I just get distracted and go off into a hundred different thoughts. So I put on, so on YouTube or on like your music, whatever you get, stream your music from, I just find something without words. So actually, if you just put into YouTube, even soaking worship music, you can get like hours Mm. of like, it's just music, but it's, it kind of helps me focus my heart and then I will just sit with that and just simply, you can just simply ask Jesus, what's your word for me for 2022 and expect God to answer Mm -hmm. and don't overthink it. We overthink it because we think that God won't speak that directly, but he will. So if you literally go, what word do you have for me in 2022? Whatever word comes into your heart or into your mind, it might be a picture, you might literally see the word, or for me, it's just, it's a feeling. It's like, oh, beyond like that. It's just a word that dropped into my mind. Write it down. Yeah. Um, and like, even if you need to come back to it and go like, just to check in with God a couple of days later, right? Is this really the word? Like, is there more that you want to say to me in that? And mm. for me, it's like the word beyond came in and he gave me a couple of other things, including leading me to Gideon and all that kind of thing which kind of ties into where Nick's going to go next. But like, it's just, in some ways it's as simple as that. So don't like fear it, don't overthink it. It's just very much, what's your word for me? Mm. Donk. And like whatever comes into your head first, like write it down and then move on to something else if you need to. Because I think sometimes we can overthink, over ponder. And then we're like, did you really say that? Was that just me? Or, you know, and God will confirm it because he's good like that. Like when we spend time with him, praying and talking with him, he will confirm things in our heart. And the beautiful thing about the way that God works and the way that God speaks to us, I think, Mm -hmm. and and this is where we can sometimes over spiritualize it and expect it to be something more than it actually mm-hmm. is, is that God can literally drop a, a word into your mind yeah. and, and you can have a sense inside, which is yeah. the Holy Spirit in, in you just yeah. going, yeah, that's yeah. right. And it will feel right. Or yeah. you might go, you know what? That's not right. That was a word I saw on a poster <laughs> earlier. Right. And, and so you can dismiss those things, but yeah. quite often when God gives you something, when he speaks to you, if you're not you're used to hearing from God, you just yeah. know you have this yeah. kind of quiet confidence inside. Mm. Yes, that's right. And yeah. we can do the same with asking yeah. God for a Bible verse. Yes. So we would yeah. encourage you to use both of these things. Ask yeah. God for a, a word yeah. and ask God to give you a verse of scripture, a verse from the Bible. Yeah. It might be two verses, but just something <laughs> short um, that will speak in to the year ahead that yeah. he's just wanting to assure you with and, uh, and yeah. affirm within you that is going to be a word of confidence for you. And that might be something that you might already have like a life verse or a verse that you know is just solid. And it might be that God just says, yeah, just hold on to that. But Mm. it might be that as you come to God and say, what's your, do you have a verse for me? Do you have something in your, in the Bible that you want to, me to hold on to this year yeah. he might put another verse in your heart or in your mind yeah um, and actually if this is something new to you and you're kind of maybe struggling with it a bit and you kind of sat there and you think oh, i'm just not getting anything like if you have someone in your life even mm, one of our team or one of the community here or even nick or i like we like reach out to someone and say i'm really struggling to hear god's voice for my life yeah. next year like i i can't think of a word or a verse or whatever it might be like reach out and ask someone else to pray and then you'll probably find that when they share with you what they got, they go, you go, yeah, I did think that actually that like, and you're like, oh yeah, like that is what God was saying. Cause I sometimes even struggle to verbalize what I sense God is saying. So like, I'll be sensing something and I struggle to verbalize it. Someone then says something, I'm like, yes, that's Mm. it. Like that's what I've been sensing. And so, you know, we're in community. God has put us in community. So use your community. Okay, um, so we can ask God for a, a word. Yeah. We can ask God for a Bible verse. And then yeah. we introduced an exercise last yeah, year. Yeah, and I want to, like, yeah, absolutely. So um, it was actually, I, I remember last year introducing it and forgetting who had um, shared it. His name is Daryl uh, Johnson. He's an incredible man of God yeah. who works uh, with the Way Church, actually, mm. um, and just speaks into other pastors' lives. He's mm. an incredible, uh, wiser, older 
a leader who just has a passion for leading other leaders in their faith. Um, and so this was an exercise to, again, it's it's learning to hear God's voice for your, your life. So it's another thing to kind of help you along that way. And it's kind of a process that helps process what's happened and lead us better into what God wants for us. And so it's a bit, you get a piece of paper, you split it into six like squares, I guess. And then you have to do it in this order because I think it helps process. Um, so you have loss. So you ask God, you know, where do I feel loss? And you just write down again, first thing that comes into your head, what, what am I angry about? That's number two. What, are, what am I feeling anger about? And we will have that sense. Next one, what am I fearful of? What am I fearing? What's my fear right now? Mm. And put that down. What am I longing for? It's like, what's your heart yearning for? What is it longing for as you go into 2022? What has, what gives you joy or what has brought you joy? Either one, like what, what, where's joy in your life right now? Mm. That's the fifth one. And the last one is, what are you sensing? What, mm. what are you sensing God is saying? And as you go through this, I think I said this last time, as you go through, by the time you get to sensing, you have a good idea of actually what God's saying to you because mm. you've kind of processed like almost the negatives in the loss and the anger and the fear. And you've started to sense the positive and the joy and um, the longing. And then by the time you get to sensing, you can just feel what God's saying to you. And, mm -hmm. you know, with these three things, whether it's the word, the verse, or this exercise, they're just good ways of just processing what God is saying to you right now. And hopefully we'll start you off in 2022 well. And that's our heart for us and for you guys is that you get to do that. I yeah. Guess. Now, I think there's a reality as we head into 2022 that we can kind of reflect on the last two years, mm -hmm. which have in many ways been marred by COVID. Yeah. And, and that has had a lot of impact on a lot of people in all sorts of different yeah. ways. And maybe things haven't turned out as we've expected personally. Mm -hmm. Maybe things haven't turned out quite as we expected from a church point of view. Yeah, right. the, the journey that we've been on yeah. in, in <laughs> establishing NUMA has not been what we thought it would look yeah, like. 100%. And we love it but it's not what we expected. Yeah. And, and so there can be a sense sometimes that we're struggling with some disappointment or discouragement. Mm. Um, and I guess the, the thing is we don't want to allow those things to stop us from continuing on into the things that God is calling us to. Yeah. And we need to therefore hold on to, to the things that God has put on our hearts, hold on to the things that God has yeah. spoken over us. And so for us, yeah. as a church we want to continue forwards it's the same vision <laughs> yeah. um and the same dreams are still there yeah. for us um and, and so there's i guess there's this question that comes up where are we on those things yeah um yeah and i think there's this, this sense for us as a church for us as leaders that you know we want to see god fulfill these dreams and visions mm -hmm. and we absolutely believe he can and actually quite i've been reading um crazy faith by mike todd and um that's a whole other thing that I could talk about. But part of that, he was talking about foundations and how important foundations are to our dreams and visions and yeah. calls that God puts on our lives. Because um, when, so we've, I guess we've seen that the vision and dreams that we have for Numa Church could be like skyscraper sized. Like there's yeah. some things that we look at and go, you, we know God's put them on our heart for this yeah. community, for this region, but they're huge. Yep. But actually part of that, in order to build that skyscraper, they need to have, we need to have deep foundations. Mm. So we really believe that this season, and actually yep. Nick received an email from, it's actually my old youth pastor back in the UK, who yep. I've known for years. He's seen me at my worst and at my best. <laughs> um, but he, <laughs> he truly has. But we, um, he just had this word and it tied in so well with what I was sensing yes, about yeah. building these foundations. And I believe God is actually building deep foundations mm. here yeah. in Numa Church because what he has for us as a community needs these deep foundations for right. us to for, well, for God to build what he wants to build. Yeah. So, you know, and I think sometimes we can be like, oh, you know, have I done a good job of building the foundations? And um, Mike Todd makes this point that in Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, now faith. 
And so he's kind of reframed that as in now faith, like faith for now, like that sense that yeah. we can be building foundations at any point. If you feel like you should have been building foundations in your life and you haven't, today's a good day to start. Right. And don't yeah. think that just because you haven't, you can't, right? So start digging now. But I think mm. God has been building these foundations in Numa Church yeah. for the last year and a half. And yeah. I think they're going to run deep. I think we're finding it slow and I think we're finding it steady. But I think that's because he's doing a deep work. And I had that word when I preached about being a deep well. And I think mm -hmm. there's been foundations that have been built before and we're building on them. But they're, it's all going to run deep so that what is being built in this region is going to stand firm and be effective and for the kingdom. Just, just as you're sharing that, it's reminding yeah. me that particularly in this area, when we see these tall skyscraper buildings go yeah. up, yeah. like they, the sites seemingly yeah. sit for months mm. on end mm. and you don't see the progress, but it's because no. they are Going digging down. deep. It's yeah. because they're spending so long putting those yeah. foundations 100%. in place. And then when they start to build, yeah, they it's it almost feels like it's accelerated yeah right? absolutely and I, I i trust that actually we're going to see that and there's a couple mm. of verses that god just reminded me of galatians 6 9 and let us not grow weary of doing good for in due yeah. season we will reap if we do not give up you know yeah. we can't give up on this dream Come and on. vision just because it's slow right and there is a time <laughs> that god has ordained for the harvest yeah. and we will see that harvest but only mm. when god releases it yeah. so we just keep on being obedient we keep praying mm. we keep worshiping we had that you know wait watch and worship and we yeah. will wait and we will watch and we will worship until well yeah. beyond when god moves yeah. hope like i don't ever want to stop waiting no. watching and worshiping right because that's it's... what god has called us to do on an everyday basis and there's philippians 1 6 and i am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of jesus christ and i think you know that's for personal you know i encourage that for us personally mm. but also as a church like yeah. god is started something here and yeah. he will bring it to completion yeah, he will. and yeah. i think that's really important that we you know there is that call to remain faithful to remain obedient to stay the course to see god's work come yeah. to completion yeah and one of the things that god's been reminding me of recently is the story of elijah and it's um mm. after he's been on the the mountain with the prophets of baal baal, baal um yeah. <laughs> however um, you choose to pronounce yeah, that yeah. and um <laughs> There's been a drought mm. in the region. And then he sends his servant out to go and look and to look for the rain. And the servant comes back and says that there's nothing there. And so he sends his servant out another six times. So seven yeah. times in total. And the seventh time he comes back, um, this is in First Kings 18. Um, it says, uh, go and look toward the sea, Elijah told his servant. And he went, the servant went and looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. And the seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand mm. is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab the king, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. And there's a couple of things that I feel mm. that God has been reminding me of and speaking uh, to me about through this. First of all, he says, go and look towards the sea. Mm. So there's this aspect that we have to look yeah. with expectant faith and we've got yeah. to look in the right direction for, for God's move. We can't yeah. be looking at the things of this world. We've got to keep our eyes fixed on God and we've got to yeah. look forward with expectant faith. Yeah. Secondly, we've got to keep praying with persistent faith. So yeah. while Elijah sent his servant out these seven times, yeah. Elijah was on his knees on Mount Carmel yeah. praying. Yeah. And we've got to pray with that persistent faith. Like yeah. you just said, don't quit, yeah. don't give up. Yeah. Thirdly, we've got to recognize with confident faith Mm -hmm. That the small cloud that is out there yeah. leads to a great downpour, which is what comes in the very next verse. Yeah. And that when we see God moving, even in those small ways, when we catch a glimpse of that mm. small cloud, yeah. we need to have great faith yeah. that a greater work is coming. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I've just had this phrase for Numa Church at the moment that was small but mighty. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, what we could see with our human eyes in terms of success or like whatever it is about a church plant, we are small. Mm -hmm. But I really believe that God is making us mighty. Mm -hmm. And I see that in how God's moved in our community. I see it in all sorts of ways. And I believe God is building this strong spirit within Numa mm -hmm. Church. It's, it is like those deep wells, those deep foundations I was talking about. And mm -hmm. it's this sense that like, 
because he's building something that's going to go forward. It's not just about yeah. what we see in Numa Church now. It's something that's going to echo into eternity, yeah. into future generations. Yeah. And that's a word that's been spoken over Nick and I about this ministry is that it's not just about now. It's something that we're building into future generations in yeah. this region. And that's exciting to me. Yeah, and, right. you know, I've spoken about us waiting, watching and worshiping and this last year, our focus has been on prayer and we're going to absolutely continue doing that into yeah. the new year. But I think God's kind of sh- going to shift us slightly into more of the worship. And, you know, that's how we dig wells. That's how we fight mm. our battles. It's yeah. through worship. So I feel God is kind of preparing like a worship ground mm. for us to deepen these wells. And there's something brewing. And, you know, Nick and I have had a conversation with someone recently and they were speaking to us about this worship. So, you know, he's definitely stirring something in this region and we can't wait to see what God actually does in that. So like, I just love the fact that like we've kind of built this culture of prayer within Numa. And I believe that we've built it to the extent that that's going to continue. So now he's Mm -hmm. ready to add on to that, that will take us further. And I do believe that that's going to be in worship. And I think, it's going to be beyond Numa, which is also like back to what I was saying before about that whole like coming together. Like it's just so powerful. And I believe God's got something really exciting about unity and worship in this region. And also about like previous generations carrying into our generation, which then means it goes forward into the other generations. And that sense that we're standing on the shoulders of those who've come before us. And it means that we can lift those up who are going to follow on on after us. And it's just really exciting to see what God's doing around that. So keep your eyes open and your ears peeled for like what's going to happen in the new year around that because yeah. yeah there's some exciting so, conversations happening around that <laughs> yeah and, and so we are going to be pushing into both prayer yeah. and worship yeah. this coming year yeah um the worship we're still figuring out what yeah. that looks <laughs> like but yeah. as sarah says it's, it's exciting what yeah. we feel god is saying about that but in the new year we we're going to start the year with 21 days of, of prayer, prayer. So so there will be a real focus around prayer again as yeah. we enter this new year, kicking off on January 1st. Yep. And we're starting um, with a prayer walk. So we yep. would love for you to come and join us. Yep. We're going to meet outside the Caprice Theatre at two o'clock on New yep. Year's Day. So normally we do our prayer walks in the morning, but we've said nope. we recognize people are probably <laughs> going to be up late the night before seeing in the new year. So yep. enjoy uh, a late restful morning yeah. in bed but if you can come out and join us at two o'clock and then we're going to go out and pray for our community yeah. again we absolutely believe god works powerfully yeah. through those times of prayer we're also going to be starting yeah. um as this 21 days of prayer we're going to follow a plan together yeah. that is on uh the U version bible app so a lot of us have that on our phones mm-hmm. you can also access it on your desktop computer and yeah. um, that plan is called send revival 21 days of fasting and prayer um, and we're going to just invite you into that. If if you're not part of um, our, our group and our, our collectivity, if you like, that's <laughs> entirely the wrong word. It's fine. Um, we understand. But we would love you just to um, email us at hello at numa.church and we'll yeah. make sure you get an invitation to join us yep. for those 21 days of prayer as well. And yep. we're just going to focus on making room for Jesus, preparing yep. our hearts and preparing um, ourselves for what he's wanting to do in yeah. us and through us yeah. in this coming year. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think it is just that sense of um, preparation mm-hmm. for the year and like preparing for what God wants to do. Yes, it is about yeah. what we want to see God do in our lives as well. And I think that's a really important piece, but it is also that preparation for what he's yeah. going to do in 2022. And part of that, which is a bit more like, I guess, us centered is at the start of our 21 days of prayer i we've always encouraged people to write down like two or three prayer points Mm -hmm. to pray into so the areas that you want to see god move in your life now that can be you very personally it could be something wider whatever that looks like for you it could be for your family and just on that like i was kind of prayer in preparation for this session, I kind of went back in my journal to the beginning of last year and the word and like what I was praying into. And I had these three prayer points um, that I put out at the start of 2021. And one of them was about our immigration. And I think most of you will know that actually God has made a way there in 
it's more the speeding up. He's accelerated processes. Like when we reapplied for our work permits, it came back in a week outside of COVID. That should be a three month process. In COVID, it was a week. Shouldn't have happened. It did. <laughs> Jesus went before us. Yeah. And then our permanent residency, we were told it will take a year. It took two months. Yeah. So, you know, we, I just looked back at that prayer point. I was like, wow, it was right there. Like, yeah. obviously I've been praying, but I just don't think I'd fully put all the pieces together. That was a specific thing I'd ask God for, for this year. year yeah. And to be fair, that happened in, you know, towards the end of it in some ways, but yeah. equally don't worry if God doesn't fulfill that right up until the 11th hour. He has kind of a habit of doing that, I think. <laughs> it's called faith building, I think. Yeah. Um, the other one was just provision for our kids' education. And, you know, we... Gave up a lot to come here, which mm -hmm. included some savings that initially would earmarked for our kids' future, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. We felt God it was right to do it. And just again, in the last month, God's just made a way for us to start an education savings and plan for our kids. And that was one of my prayer points. So I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. The third one hasn't quite come to pass, but some of these things require us to do stuff. So like... <laughs> Um, it's all around being a bit healthier and fitter, which I kind of have done a little bit, but yeah. not fully. So that's one that I'll be carrying forward and asking Jesus' help to do that better in 2022. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I mean. Like, don't yeah. feel bad about carrying some of this stuff forward. So, and I just want to encourage you, leave room for the miracle. That's so good. Right? So leave room for God to do what only God can do. Yeah. So write this stuff down even if you think, well, that's never going to happen or mm. wow, that's way beyond me. Like leave room for the miracle because dreaming big builds the foundations of faith. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking about building those foundations. So build those foundations by taking those steps of faith to pray for things that are beyond you. And doesn't Mike Todd say in the Crazy Faith book that it's only crazy until it happens? happens. Exactly that, right? right? So, yeah. And um, we actually have something on our wall that said it always seems impossible until it Just is done. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I was talking about the crazy face stuff with Ella and she was like, well, that's like what we've got written on our wall. And it totally is. And it I is, think yeah. it's that is it's only crazy until it happens. So write it down, pray it, see what God does with it. And yeah. I think but in hand with that, there is a sense of preparing what you pray for, preparing for what you pray for. I rather. love that so, phrase, prepare for what, what you, you pray, pray for. for. Yeah, so, so good. Yeah. So it's this sense that pray big, pray beyond you, pray for the big dreams, pray for what you, you know, beyond what you can mm -hmm. imagine, but then take steps to prepare for it because yeah. God wants to give you that thing. God yeah. wants to lead you into that space. But it's not something that just happens instantly overnight out of nowhere. Like, if you feel God's calling you to a specific thing that is beyond you right now, what can you do today to get you just one tiny step further yeah. towards that? And it might just be as simple as reading your Bible more, or it could be taking an online course in something, mm. or it could be finding a mentor to speak and pray into what you're feeling called to. It mm -hmm. could be one of a hundred things but prepare for what you pray this for. Is so good. And Psalm 27, 13 to 14 says, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And I think what that spoke to me was that we have a part to play in what we pray for. Yeah. I totally believe that God can just do it all and he does. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to take that step of faith. We have to take that movement forward that we actually believe what we're praying for. Yeah. And believing so God when he says, you know, that he will move in our lives, that actually we can do that. And there's so many things mm. we can do to prepare for what we pray for. You yeah. know, I could have prayed to God at the start of the year, make a way for our permanent residency. And then we just didn't do the application and we didn't contact our lawyer. But God, you haven't done anything. Yeah. But we had to put in the preparation. We yeah. had to you know, put in our forms, we had to get our medical, you know, all the things. And then when the application was submitted, that's where God could come in and go, ding, yeah. right? Whereas if we hadn't done the work and done that, then God couldn't have actually done the miracle. So mm. I think, well, he could have done, I guess, but that would have been weird because we wouldn't have filled in the paperwork. Um, but, <laughs> you know, let's be real about it. Yeah. Prepare for what you pray for. And I think that's, that's just a really good way of going into 2022. I, I couldn't agree more. And, um, 
I, I feel that's that's a real word. Like that's mm. there you go. You've got like <laughs> a, a five minute little teaching there on prepare for what you pray for. Absolutely. And yeah. I just want to switch these last two things around because yep. I would love you to just to pray into yep. that okay. off the back of sharing. And yep. then I'll just close out with the awesome. little bits of info that we've got at the end. <laughs> okay, let's do that. Father, we just thank you that we can uh, just continually come before you. And Father, we just thank you that you are faithful, that yeah. you are generous, that you are merciful. Yes, Lord, that when we come to you and ask for words to be spoken into our lives, that you do that. Mm. Lord, I just pray right now that anyone who's listening to this will just have the faith and the imagination to mm. pray beyond what they've prayed before. Yes. Lord, that you will just be seeding and birthing new dreams in mm. their lives. Yeah. In all of our lives, Lord God. And that as we pray for those things, Lord Jesus, you'll show us how we can prepare for them. Yeah. That you'll be preparing our hearts, preparing us practically, Lord God. Mm. And Lord, I just pray that for Numa Church, that as we pray for these big dreams and visions, Lord, that I just thank you that we are preparing for them in prayer, in worship, that mm. we're laying those foundations, Lord. And I just pray that you will show us how to dig deep in our own personal lives, yes. that you'll show us how to dig deep as a church, mm. Lord God, as we dig those wells, as we lay those foundations. Mm. So Lord, I just pray right now that you'll just be speaking by your spirit into everyone's hearts and minds, yeah. Lord, that we can fulfill your purposes on this earth, Lord God, yes. that we will see your kingdom kingdom come that we will see your kingdom grow mm -hmm. lord and we just pray that your kingdom will grow in us mm -hmm. lord god that it will expand in our own hearts and lives so that it can expand in our communities in our homes in our businesses lord god yeah. and i just pray again lord that you will prepare us for what we are praying for yeah in jesus name yeah amen, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for being with us yeah. this morning. We're going to wrap up. Um, and just thanks for just taking the time yeah. uh, to, to connect with this at whatever point you're watching this. Thank you for, for, for being with us. We, yeah. we love that. We'd love to invite you to join us um, next Sunday. Um, well, yeah, anytime yeah, we'll you're watching this yeah. next Sunday is going to be appropriate. Um, but we'd specifically like to invite you to join us on January 2nd, which yeah. is going to be our first service of the new year. Yeah. So 10 a.m. at the Caprice Theatre in South Surrey. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be meeting for that first service. Yeah. I'm going to have a, a message called Ready, Set, Go that is just going to be looking at kind of a continuation of this idea. Yeah. How do we start well? How do we run well? And how do yeah. we end well yeah. when we're looking at the year, but also when we're just looking at our lives generally. Yeah. So so join us for that. Yeah. Um, and also we just want to get word out. Uh, we're gonna be running the Alpha course online yeah. starting Wednesday, January the 19th. It's gonna be an evening thing every week. Um, and online. Online, I yeah. think I already said that, but Sorry. that's okay, it's all right, it's good. So we'll do it via Zoom. Um, and you can head to numa.church forward slash alpha to find out more about that and to sign up. And whether you've done it before or not, mm -hmm. um, we'd love to invite you to join us and we'd yeah. love to invite you to invite your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, whoever it is. Yeah. Um, it's just a great course to do and we'd yeah. love to get a bunch of people together to do that. Perfect. Well, thanks again for joining us and we'll see you all soon. Take care, God bless. Have a great new year. <laughs>